This is part one of user preferences. And in this lecture, we're going to discuss types of user preferences. We're gonna discuss the no consumer choice or option and implementation challenges. There are many different user preferences. We're gonna talk about opt-in, opt-out, double or confirmed opt-in, and no consumer choice or no consumer option. Opt-in is pretty straightforward. This is when a customer affirms to share data and or have data collected. Opt-out is often referred to as consumer choice. If you're unfamiliar with the AKA there, that just means also known as. And you'll see that a number of times throughout the course. The opt-out option is when a customer affirms not to share data or not to have their data collected. The double or confirmed opt-in is when a customer affirms by signing up for a service. The service then sends them a verification email and the consumer will go into their email and perhaps they click a link that verifies that they have confirmed. This is the, the double confirm because the customer is affirming twice. And there's also the no consumer choice or no consumer option. This is when the customer is not given a choice whether to share their data or have data collected. Regarding the no consumer choice or no consumer option, one example of this might be that we are on an e-commerce website, we purchase a product, and it is implied that we are agreeing to share our address with whoever will be shipping that product to us. This is where, number one, the consumer doesn't have a choice, but implicitly expresses their choice, right? I'm not going to pay for an item online and expect not to receive it, right? It would also be burdensome to purchase the item online and then have to send my address to whoever that third party is. And so this is a case where no consumer choice or no consumer option is actually allowed. And the FTC has weighed in on this. They've said that companies do not need to provide choice before collecting and using data that is one, consistent with the context of the transaction, or number two, consistent with the company's relationship with the consumer, or number three, authorized by law. You're going to want to remember those three exceptions. It's important to remember that selling data when a customer has opted out can bring an enforcement action. And, and so that's very important for your organization if you sell customer data. We're now going to talk about five types of implementation challenges. These include scope, mechanism, linking, time period, and third party slash vendor. And don't worry, I'm going to define and give examples of all of these. With regards to scope, an important consideration is when does opt in and opt out apply? And similarly, what PII applies? The main takeaway here is we need to know the specifics of the law. What data do we have? What laws and regulations apply to that law? And knowing the laws and regulations will determine whether or not opt-in and or opt-out are required. For example, financial institutions must get consumer opt-in in order to share data with unaffiliated third parties. However, financial institutions may share data without opt-in with affiliated third parties. Uh, again, this is just me being a huge geek, but I would love to have been a fly in the wall of the various chambers of commerce when these types of negotiations were taking place. So unaffiliated, we can't share. Affiliated, we can, but it's still a third party. And Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just me being inquisitive and, and nerdy. Another challenge is mechanism. When we're thinking about mechanism, we need to consider how will the consumer opt out? For example, are we going to send them an email and at the very bottom of the email, there's an unsubscribe button or perhaps on a, a website that provides a service, there's a place for them to click where, where they can unsubscribe. Must the consumer be required to call in, to send snail mail to the organization, to check or uncheck a box during registration? Those are all various examples of mechanisms. 
Another important consideration for mechanisms is that they should be consistent with the product and the relationship between the consumer and the organization. For example, email marketers should provide opt-out mechanisms using email. That makes sense, right? I send you some email you don't want. At the bottom of the email, it says unsubscribe. That's pretty straightforward. One law to remember is CAN SPAM. This is a fantastic acronym for Confronting the Assault on Non-Solicited Pornography and Marketing. We're going to talk about CAN SPAM later. The important thing here within the context of opt-in, opt-out is that CAN SPAM prohibits marketing companies from requiring that consumers call or snail mail to opt out. And, and by the way, just to be clear, when I say snail mail, I mean, you know, physical mail that you put in your mailbox, USPS or whoever picks it up and, and then it physically moves from one location to another. Another challenge is linking. And what I mean by linking is that a consumer preference when expressed in one area should be applied to all other areas. For example, let's say that you do emails and phone calls and you also do snail mail. If a consumer opts out of email, we should interpret that as meaning that the consumer is also intending to opt out of the other three mechanisms as well. Telephone, email, snail mail. We also need to consider time period. Some laws require that businesses process opt-out requests within so many days. Can spam and the telemarketing sales rule both have certain time periods that businesses need to respond within. We also need to consider third party and vendors. These companies that we work with, contractors, subcontractors, whatever, they should honor the requirements of the primary business for which they process data. For example, if I have a fulfillment center that ships all of my products, the fulfillment center is going to be a, a third party or vendor for me. If a customer reaches out to me and they opt out of receiving notifications or marketing brochures for, for future products, I need to make sure that the third party knows of this and does not send those along. In part one of this lecture, we've discussed types of user preferences. These include opt-in, opt-out, double confirmed opt-in, and no choice, no option. With regards to no consumer choice, no consumer option, we discuss the permissibility of this in certain contexts. And the example we used was purchasing a product from an e-commerce website and supplying the customer address to a third party for shipping. We ended by talking about five different implementation challenges, scope, mechanism, linking, time period, and third party slash vendor. It's important that you understand what these challenges refer to as well as examples.